let me just say this. I will be impressed if the AI produces recipes that work and are delicious. I will be worried if the AI blows my mind. <laughs> <laughs>I'm Priya Krishna. I'm a food reporter for The Times. One of the busiest times for us at New York Times Cooking is Thanksgiving. It is a food-centric holiday and we are thinking about how can we make this year's Thanksgiving even better than last year's Thanksgiving. And it often feels like an exercise in futility, right? Like we are inherently limited. How do we continue to top ourselves? And so I started to think technology. Maybe technology can give us some answers on what to cook for Thanksgiving that us mere mortals couldn't come up with by ourselves. I got interested in artificial intelligence because it can do so many things. And so I started to wonder, can artificial intelligence write a recipe? Thankfully, I wasn't starting from scratch with this. We have some really amazing technology correspondents at the New York Times, including Cade Metz, who's reported pretty extensively about artificial intelligence and was able to come in and give me a basic education on all things artificial intelligence. Hi, Cade. Hi, how are you? Good. Okay, so I wanted to get on the phone with you to basically get a little bit of background on AI and sort of where we are in our capabilities. What's like the sort of state of this technology? Essentially, there's this one idea that has started to work and it's called a neural network. And it's a piece of mathematics that can learn a task on its own. So the classic example is, if you have millions of photos of a cat and you feed that into a neural network, it can look for patterns and learn what specifically it needs to know to identify a cat. Mm. Well, I'm curious, like, have there been any practical applications in sort of more creative realms like cooking? There have, well, they're, they're starting to be. So essentially what researchers do is they take all sorts of information from the internet, and that's gonna include recipes and feed this into a neural network. And it's going to, in doing that, learn to do all sorts of things that you wouldn't expect it to learn. And it's going to learn to write recipes. How well do you think we can expect it to perform? Well, there's an interesting thing that happens. They're by turns super impressive and super disappointing. You might get what looks like an impressive recipe on the page, but then when you go to the kitchen, what's it going to do? Who is working on these neural networks, on these models? These large language models are the domain of very wealthy companies. But OpenAI is, a, is among those that has released this technology to the world and they're willing to, to let us use it. Shall we hop on a call with OpenAI and see what this can do? Let's do it. <laughs> Hi, Mark. My name is Mark Chen. Um, I'm a research scientist here at OpenAI and have been for the last four years. Today, we hope to show you a demo of the GPT-3 and uh, Dolly technologies and maybe tailor this demo towards some cooking applications. So what you're seeing here is the UI where you can interact with the model GPT-3. Just to illustrate with a really basic example, I could type something like, suggest a recipe for roast turkey. Okay. okay. And I think one thing to note is that this isn't stuff that already exists on the internet. The model is writing this as, as you go. It's not plagiarizing, so we can't type this into Google and the exact thing will come Yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you can say something like, um, I like my food really spicy. How can I change this recipe above? I click submit here. Maybe that's, <laughs> accurate, that's not very <laughs> yeah. spicy. I think it was literally like spices. You can try a bunch of different um, types of prompts. Like I, I might want a Thanksgiving meal that's kind of more inspired by, you know, Chinese heritage and- Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, it comes up with uh, with all of these kind of things. Oh my god, what? Rolled up in egg roll wrappers and fried until crispy? And dipping them in cranberry sauce? That sounds pretty good. <laughs> so what if you take one of those and you ask for a recipe? Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Oh my god. 
this like legitimately, like, yeah, this seems like a perfectly workable recipe. I want to yeah. make this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really surprised by GPT-3's like capacity for creativity. Like these recipes are, are fun. Th that's something I've learned a lot from a model like Dali, which is something that generates images. Dali, it has the same uh, input interface as GPT-3 that I just demoed, but here, what you're getting as the output, it isn't more text, but it's actually a, a set of images. So just to give you an example, I could say like a Thanksgiving meal. And so I can type this in, and these are images that don't exist on the internet. These are kind of new, newly generated images. Parts look familiar, but then you're like, what are those round green things? in yeah, the turkey, are yeah, they exactly. whole limes? What's that green goo? Is that guacamole? <laughs> and then last question, are there any tips you have as we generate Thanksgiving recipes that we'll actually cook here in our test kitchen? So I would say um, make your prompts very detailed. I think the more you kind of talk about who you are, you know, like what kind of food you enjoy, maybe even a lot about, you know, how you grew up. And the more you kind of put uh, of these sorts of elements, I think the, the better it can craft a completion tailored for you. Cool. I'm really excited to tell GPT-3 my life story and see what yeah. Thanksgiving <laughs> recipes it comes up with. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Yeah, thank you yeah, so much, you Mark. Guys. I'm excited. Oh, we'll, I'm we'll send you photos of how all the recipes turn out. <laughs> I would love it if the AI could reinvent Thanksgiving in some way. I know that that's like reaching for the stars a little bit, but I'm looking for the AI to present me with options that I never would have thought of. So what Mark said was to be really specific and personal with your request. I'm gonna kind of like write a little, write a little bit about myself. <laughs> I am originally from Texas and I grew up in an Indian American household. I love spicy flavors desserts that are not too sweet, chaat masala, miso. I'll say I eat mostly, I eat mostly vegetarian. Sometimes I have poultry and fish. Wow, this is like, I'm like spilling my guts. Show me a Thanksgiving menu made for me. <laughs> okay, okay. So, oh, <laughs> pumpkin spice chaat. <laughs> okay. I gotta say, this looks a little gross. Show me a few more Thanksgiving recipes made for my tastes. Let's see. Oh, green beans with miso and sesame seeds. Oh, tomato paste roasted sweet potatoes. Let's ask for more. Okay, it's giving me pumpkin spice chaat again. <laughs> this is the third time. Fine, I'll make it. <laughs> I wanna stretch, stretch its creativity a little bit. Let's see, let's try stuffing. Okay, this could be horrible. The ingredients are naan, chorizo, onion, red pepper, cilantro, cumin, chili powder, black pepper, salsa, sour cream, and two eggs. <laughs> okay, so this is really interesting. So this is a pumpkin pie with, a pumpkin pie with a ginger snap crust. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I'm not like this is gonna replace humans, but I'm, but like I would eat. I mean, like I would eat this pumpkin spice chaat. I'm curious enough. Oh, they just keep the Indian flavors. <laughs> They've really put me in a box. <laughs> so I'm going to keep playing around with this. I'm having so much fun. We're gonna come back to the test kitchen. I'm gonna cook all of these recipes and we'll see how it turns out. We are back. I am going to make all one, two, three, I think there's six recipes. I'm gonna make all six. So I think just in terms of expectations, most unhinged, non-stuffing, most delicious, pumpkin spice cake, could be disgusting or a sleeper hit, pumpkin spice chop. It's a whole Thanksgiving dinner in a day. We have some of our cooking writers who are gonna come by and test these recipes, and we will answer that age-old question, will we be replaced by robots? <laughs> so this is a roasted turkey with a soy ginger glaze. It's a pretty simple recipe to preheat oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. In a small bowl, whisk together soy sauce, maple syrup, ginger, garlic, and black pepper. Can you believe my first turkey I'm making ever is a 
artificial intelligence turkey. It tastes great. It's like a great glaze. Brush the soy ginger glaze all over the skin. Can you tell I'm not comfortable around poultry? <laughs> Roast oh the turkey gosh. for three to four hours or until the internal temperature of the thigh meat reaches 180 degrees Fahrenheit. This is really not how I imagine this happening. First My first turkey. It just like it, it it feels like inoffensive, but I don't know. I don't I don't know how much of the flavor we're actually going to get. Continuing on into the great unknown, I have also never baked for Thanksgiving. My husband Seth is like very, very into baking, so I see him bake, but I don't actually do the baking myself. I'm just doing this based off of what I see Seth do. So when I was in fifth grade, my composition teacher, Mr. Rush, did this assignment where we all had to write how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And you had to make the instructions like super specific and he would do literally what you said. So if, for example, if you didn't say open the peanut butter jar, he would just put the jar directly on top of the bread. And these recipes seem very much like, <laughs> this would not pass Mr. Rush's peanut butter and jelly test, just saying. In a large bowl, whisk together the flour, baking powder, baking soda, cinnamon, ginger, cloves, and salt. So far, so good. In another bowl, mix together the pumpkin puree, olive oil, honey, and eggs. No sugar, the honey is the, this is the sweetener. Add the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients and mix until well combined. It's so thick. I feel like this is gonna be a rock. I'm also like, this is supposed to fit into two pans? Like, this is not great. Oh, look how thin it, like, that. We all believed in this recipe. We were all rooting for you. You know, I think the thing is just, it's very pumpkin forward. Like, it almost tastes a little savory to me. But again, I guess I like, I said I didn't like sweet desserts. So it's clearly picked up on some general baking best practices. You know, it says until a toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean and knows that it's the toothpick test. But like a lot of these are sort of, they're so basic, even I know them, so. It really does look like cake. Looks like cake, smells like cake. Uh, frosting time? Yeah. The pumpkin puree frosting. In a large bowl, beat together the cream cheese, pumpkin puree, honey, and orange zest until smooth. So I'll try some. I mean, it's not bad. It's definitely not sweet. Again, it's like pushing, it's leaning savory. It sort of tastes like orange, it tastes like orange juice. It's very orangey. Now it's time to make what might be the longest stuffing ass recipe ever written. It's like it took every ingredient that I said I liked and stuffed it into a stuffing recipe. Look at the length of this ingredient list. Base is naan. Unfortunately, to the detriment of Indians everywhere, it calls it naan bread. Like, what doesn't this recipe have? I mean, the first version of this included salsa, so I'm glad it doesn't have salsa. This is either gonna be really delicious or really disgusting. I don't think it'll be anywhere in the middle. Let's do this. We're adding onion, garlic, and ginger, and stir until the onion is translucent, about five minutes. Okay, so that's not bad. Our chopped masala, cumin, coriander, turmeric, black pepper, cayenne. That's a lot of spices. Our next addition is a big, big addition. We're adding chickpeas, broth, tomato paste, cilantro, mint, parsley, raisins, almonds, apricots, dates, currants, ginger, lemon zest, cinnamon, cardamom, cloves, nutmeg, and black pepper. Bring to a simmer. I mean, there's not a lot of liquid even to simmer here. I'm just so distracted by the sheer quantity of dried fruit. I'm a little scared. It's a lot of stuff. This is throwing everything that I theoretically like at me and is like, please like me. <laughs> Combine non milk, butter, and egg in a large bowl. Okay, a layer of these pieces. Just says spoon it over. I'm not, I mean, you know, I haven't lost hope. I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it's how I feel about this. Uh, bake until bubbly, and the top is golden brown. Oh, oh, about 30 minutes, okay. I don't know how we're gonna assess golden brownness, but it did say 30 minutes, so we'll start there. Now for the recipe we have all been waiting for. <laughs> the recipe that GPT-3 was so desperate for me to make that it recommended it on five different occasions. Pumpkin spice chat. 
This to me just feels like it's sort of mashed pumpkin with some stuff on top. Can openers are made for right-handed people. So in a bowl, mix together pumpkin puree, chaat masala, ginger, clove, cinnamon, and black pepper. I said I like chaat masala in the prompt, so it seems to just be like tossing chaat masala into recipes at will. Usually with chaat, I'm using chaat masala as a finishing spice, not, not cooking it. Heat the oil in a pan over medium heat, add pumpkin mixture and cook for five minutes. Letting this sit for five minutes. Add lime juice and cilantro, cook for another minute. It smells like pumpkin spice. And this is gonna be garnished with peanuts, yogurt, and lime wedges, but I'm gonna wait for the judges to arrive. All right, turkey is at the three hour mark. We, we did tent it with foil, so there's that. Okay, it's 160 in the middle. I mean, the instruction said we're looking for 180 degrees stuck into the thigh. Should we like give it a little bit more time? So I would call this green bean recipe sort of straight down the middle. You're making a miso dressing, tossing it with blanched green beans, sprinkling it with sesame seeds. Miso, sesame, vinegar, and honey is a very intuitive combination. I, like, I think this will be good. So we've got bring a pot of water to a boil and blanch the green beans for two to three minutes. There is no salt in the blanching liquid. In a bowl, whisk together the miso paste, sesame oil, rice vinegar, honey, and red pepper flakes. This is good. I would eat this. <laughs> Drain the green beans and add them to the bowl with the miso mixture. Toss to coat, sprinkle with sesame seeds, and serve. I mean, yeah, visually, this is the most visually appealing dish so far. Oh, I am so sorry to our judges. <laughs> Oh God, okay. Turkey and stuffing are both ready to come out. Okay. It really just looks absolutely horrible. <laughs> but it smells nice. And the turkey. I think the turkey's good to go. I feel good, it looks good. I mean, if we had not tented it with foil, it would look a lot worse. So we had to tent it with foil to make it like edible, but I don't know, maybe it'll surprise us. We are at our last recipe, which is cranberry sauce. And for this recipe, I basically asked GPT-3, I typed in, can you show me a cranberry sauce recipe that's not too sweet and a little spiced? And it literally generated cranberry sauce that's not too sweet and a little spiced. I mean, it's a recipe that says exactly what it is. Okay, so the instructions are wash the cranberries and remove any stems, which we've done. In a medium saucepan, combine cranberries, orange juice, white sugar, brown sugar, cinnamon, ginger, and allspice. I love cranberry sauce. It goes so well with Indian food. This is the dish I actually do cook at Thanksgiving. Bring to a boil over medium heat, stirring frequently. Reduce heat to low and simmer for 10 minutes, stirring occasionally. Remove from heat and let cool. Cranberry sauce will thicken as it cools. I think this will be okay, actually. All right, so we are going to frost our cake, carve our turkey, and we'll serve it all up. It's clean. I'll just do that much. Barely sweet would be the word. I'm going to do a little bit more. This is giving giant whoopie pie. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> I mean, actually, this could, it very well could be that this was the right quantity of frosting. Like, GPT-3 had a plan all along. <laughs> So we figured in the spirit of this experiment, I would carve the turkey based solely off of GPT-3's instructions. Begin by removing the legs. Cut through the skin that connects the leg to the body. Okay, so these, this crevice, oh, these kinda, this kinda twists right off. I mean, came right off. So far, so good. <laughs> Cut through the skin that connects the wing to the body. Cut through the skin that connects the wing to the body. And then move the entire leg by cutting through the skin that connects it to the pelvis. Okay. <laughs> All right, honestly, this, like, this looks decent. Looks decent. I'm gonna finish this up and then we are going to invite our judges to come taste what we've made. So our judges are my esteemed colleagues, Genevieve Ko, Yuande Komalafe, Eric Kim, and Melissa Clark, who are all kind of experts at Thanksgiving cooking. We have given GPT-3 
the best shot. So we are now going to bring in our panel of judges. What is that? What is that? <laughs> Yeah, what are your initial, I'm just curious, initial reactions? Is this what you expected? You know what, it's, it is what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> if you all wouldn't mind making yourselves a plate of all the savory stuff, we'll do the dessert last. This is like GPT-3 generating like a Priya-specific Thanksgiving. So the first dish <laughs> you have, which is this dish that everyone thought was dessert, it is called pumpkin spice chop. I'm gonna let GPT-3 do the talking. <laughs> this recipe for pumpkin spice chaat is perfect for my tastes. It is a delicious and easy snack or side dish that is perfect for Thanksgiving. And this is what it thought it should look like. Ooh, wow, <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> This is like straight up bad. Straight it's like up. bitter, but not like the good bitter. It, exactly. It's like bad. It's like bad bitter. It's bad bitter. Yeah, I was gonna say, would you consider this a chot? <laughs> I I wouldn't, because I think chots are like delicious and balanced. <laughs> <laughs> roast turkey with a soy ginger glaze. This roasted turkey recipe is inspired by the flavors of my childhood. My mom used to make a similar dish when I was growing up, and I loved it. GPT-3 kind of just made up a backstory for me. I, I thought, thought that was you something had said. No, 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 this is entirely written by a computer. This recipe is easy to follow and will give you impressive results. So go ahead and give it a try. Your family and friends will be impressed. Did it look like that when it came out of the oven? It actually looked, the turkey looked okay. pretty good coming out of the oven. It took about three hours and 20 minutes for it to reach an internal temperature of 180 degrees, which is what it said. Okay. Okay. <laughs> turkey is drier than the it's driest so turkey I've dry. ever had. It is. It is drier really than the driest turkey I've ever had. The skin is good. Again, all GPT-3 generated, including this head note. This is non-stuffing. If you're looking for a stuffing recipe that packs a flavor punch, look no further than this non-stuffing. So go ahead and give it a try. Your taste buds will thank you. Oh <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what the base. You name it, it has it. <laughs> I feel like it could be good. It's like, what would you change? Like maybe not smush it down, yeah. uh -huh. like have it be more. And the spices have got to. Go, be pulled yeah. way, way back. back. Green beans with miso and sesame seeds. I was looking for a recipe that would be perfect for my Thanksgiving dinner, and I found this recipe for green beans with miso and sesame seeds. So I decided to give this recipe a try. I'm so glad I did. They sound crunchy. Good crunch. They're not overcooked. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would say this is, I would eat this. I am eating it. Okay, we're on a we're on a better trajectory. Um, next up, cranberry sauce that's not too sweet and a little spice. <laughs> this cranberry sauce is the perfect balance of sweet and tart with a little bit of spice thrown in. And the best part is it's super easy to make. So go ahead and give it a try. You won't be disappointed. Not bad. I like the spices. Not too sweet. I like the cinnamon. I don't mind this. Yeah, is it, does it live up to not too sweet and a little spice? Definitely, yeah. yeah. Okay, I mean, that's, I'm gonna give this a not bad. Okay, so for dessert, a pumpkin spice cake with orange cream cheese frosting. The orange cream cheese frosting was the perfect balance to the pumpkin spice. It was hit with everyone at the table, and I'm glad I was able to share my husband's favorite dessert. Oh. Oh man, they messed up dessert too. <laughs> so disappointing. <laughs> yeah, there's like no sweetness. So uh, yeah, what do we think overall <laughs> impressions of the meal? <laughs> well, I, so I, I think that like it's doing it without emotion. There's no context. Like I don't feel anything. A soul? There's no like a no soul behind it. Hey, well the good news is you guys are not out of a job. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like we still have our jobs. Yeah. <laughs> It feels very like machine generated. Like it's, it's, there's no backstory. There's like, even the head notes are so literal. You know, it's like, hi, I'm Priya. I'm married, you know? I guess what I want is for people to watch this and realize how much work goes into developing a recipe. So true. How much labor oh and 
you know, there's people thinking about every little detail. Thank you for being willing participants in this experiment and giving your honest feedback. I can't say I disagree with any of it. <laughs> I think after doing this experiment, I just don't think that it will ever be able to replace the warmth of the storytelling that happens in recipes, the intuition required, the soul that goes into generating a recipe. It could help, like, it, 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 there are ways in which it could help recipe developers. So maybe it's just like, we all have a really outmoded way of thinking, and in 30 or 40 years, technology like this is, is a standard part of recipe development and a tool that we rely on. But I think it's really hard for us to, to think of that right now because the technology is new. I hope that this can help us in some way in the future. I mean, the robots are coming for many of our jobs, but not mine. <laughs>